Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Genuine Chit Chat. This week, I'm joined by my buddy, Josh. Now, for anyone just tuning into Genuine Chit Chat for the first time, I just want you to know that this episode, Science But Simple Part 5, um, is part of a mini-series, uh, which obviously is called Science But Simple, where myself and Josh speak about everyday scientific things, and Josh explains them to me in sort of an easy-to-understand manner. Now, Josh has a degree in marine biology and is also trained to become a teacher. I, uh, in school, didn't do that great in science uh, for a multitude of reasons, mainly the choices I sort of chose. But um, basically, I don't know a lot of really simple things about science. So we decided to do this mini series where we talk about those sort of things. And in this episode in particular, we speak about respiration, metabolism. It's basically breathing and eating and how that kind of how inhaling air and eating food allows your body to do things in in layman's terms, you know. Now, as you may see by the description, we actually don't just discuss humans and how we metabolize and respire. We also speak about plants as well as describe sort of fish and things. So it's kind of like a a nice, lightly detailed, widespread discussion about this sort of thing. Um, So if you enjoy this, be sure to check out some of the other episodes of Science But Simple. As I said, this is the fifth one, so you can go back. Um, They're generally every sixth episode or so. This one was just a bit delayed compared to the other ones, but, you know, that's how it goes. Now, just before we get started, we've got a promo from Comics in Motion, who is a fellow member of the Brit pod scene, so I implore you guys to go check that out. And after the promo, the show will get started. So thanks as always for tuning in, guys. Um, You can follow us on the usual social media outlets and things. Uh, Be sure to subscribe and review us on iTunes because it does help us get up the charts and things and helps other people kind of see the show. Um, If you don't want to do any of those things, even mentioning genuine chit-chat to any of your friends or people you know would be absolutely wonderful if you think it's worth it. Anyway, I'm going to stop going on now. Um, I'll talk to you guys at the end for more details on upcoming things. And uh, yeah, talk to you then. Hi, Liam. I'm so glad I got through to you. I'm a really big fan. I don't know who you are. Well, I'm glad you asked. We're the Comics in Motion podcast, and you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, and most of the podcast platforms. I don't know what you want. It was more just to let you know that we do in-depth weekly reviews of media like movies, TV shows, and games that are based on comic books. We also go into the background of the comics and the production of that media itself. If you are looking for a ransom, I can tell you I don't have money. Well, five-star review might be nice, but honestly, there's no money necessary to listen. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Seems a little pretentious. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. Weren't those spring chickens either, to be honest. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. Uh, Are you expecting a different caller from me, maybe? If you let my daughter go now, that'll be the end of it. I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. Well, would be nice if you could come and have a listen and even check out our Twitter page at Comics in Motion P. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you. I will kill you. Uh, okay. Chris? I think this one's for you. Welcome to Genuine Chit Chat, where we have honest conversations with interesting people. And I'm your host, Mike Burton. Um, but I was going to say, with tiredness, do you know anything about how tiredness affects biology or anything like that? Like, hey, um, do you know why, why do people need to sleep? It's a very arbitrary big question. Uh, it's basically a period of time. As far as I'm aware, it's just giving your body a period of time where, because your brain is constantly processing everything. Mm-hmm. And it means that when you're sleeping, your brain can process stuff and collate things and everything um, without having that constant input of new information. Yeah, it's basically like closing it's like closing a room off and filing stuff, like saying, okay, yes. I'm going to sort out the filing in this room today instead of have people coming in and keep giving you new files. Like, this needs to be sorted out quickly. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. yeah, that makes sense. Well, brought that up subtly. Ooh, segue, because we're in science, but simple, aren't we? And I've already started recording, um, which you already knew, because... Yes. That's probably the most appropriate sound of it. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I'm going to keep that. And that's going to be the official <laughs> soundbite for the science, but simple. That's the sound of my brain when it's trying to focus on all the science stuff. It's just like, yeah, because... 
But yeah, anyway. Um, no, that's not super simple because I haven't done one in a while. So here you go. That's basically the gist of it. <laughs> um, humans, people. I'm tired, so this is going to be a fun one for us. Mike hasn't paid me yet. Not yet, no. <laughs> you guys have to start paying me, that's the thing. Once you guys start paying me, oh. I can then, you know, calculate it and give Josh an incredibly small and unfair amount of money, because that's how content creation works now. YouTube. Let's not go into that. Uh, I'd love to, but this is science, but simple. That'll not. be for another time. That'll, be, that'll <laughs> probably pop up again when we do the next, the oh, second yes. gaming edition with uh, well, Reese. I, we, were, we were hoping, I think, when we were hoping that the next gaming one was going to be a bit more positive. Yes, we'll do that. I'm thinking around doing that around Christmas time. Like, uh, we could do nostalgic games and release yeah. it around Christmas. The so one before cool. ended up being a lot more about, um, how much, how yeah, much the gaming well, industry it, it, ruins it, things. Yeah, it went into a lot of, to do with the game industry, which, <sighs> I mean, it, this is no tangents. I'm just going to say it's got worse. <laughs> <laughs> just a little hint, guys. The gaming industry has got worse. Huh. Assassin's Creed. Huh. More like Assassin's Greed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, respiration. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to ask you about, um, well, basically, how the, the human body... The mitochondrion is the powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> so... Anyone, anyone who's in our generation or older will get that. Anyone who's a little bit younger is going to be like... Uh, I apologise for like how ASMR that must have been me speaking very close to the mic. <laughs> oh, I think my listeners love it. Don't you? See, it's great. They, they all love it. They don't. I don't know. No one tells me anything yeah, these days. Get the plastic bags, like. <laughs> oh god, yeah. Get like, or like uh, rubbing uh, polystyrene yeah. together. Ooh, that's awful. Right, okay, that is enough tangents. That's Oi, it's my podcast, and I'll go on as many tangents as I want. Anyway, Josh, don't you say another word because we're going to get into this. Mike stuff. is depriving me of sleep now. I'm already deprived of sleep, <laughs> so here we go. Um, I want to ask you about respiration and metabolism, and kind of see where that goes. Um, no. Okay, okay, cool. Well, that's it, for guys. Um, nice to see you. Uh, or we'll see you. I haven't seen any of you. Um, yeah, I'm going to get less sarcastic now. I'll, I'll shut no, up and I don't you want you to introduce it. I don't want you to get less sarcastic ever. Um, no, it's um, it's more just breathing. Like, obviously, everyone, to my knowledge, breathes. Um, so, and it's it's not just, obviously, us who do it, as in humans. It's also other creatures as well. And obviously, we can go a little bit into the difference because, obviously, you know, marine biologist, essentially, it's like the difference between sort of how fish with gills, lungs, that sort of thing. So, like, if right. we start, start with the, the tiny little thread of how is it that obviously the air consists of, what is it, primarily hydrogen? No. No. Hydrogen what? is the most common element ah, in the universe. There you go. But it doesn't, ex- it doesn't really exist in huge amounts in elemental form. Cause I know that the actual amount of carbon dioxide and oxygen in the air is actually surprisingly small, isn't it? Yeah. Most of our atmosphere is nitrogen. It's roughly nitrogen. Around 80, it's roughly about 80% nitrogen. There you go. Yeah. And around obviously 20% oxygen. Yeah. And then everything else is kind of like in traces. Yeah. Cause we obviously, we breathe breathe in um oxygen um yeah. or we breathe in all of it and then we more oxygen stays in and then we breathe out oxygen gets dissolved into the blood yeah whereas obviously Gosh. trees do the opposite they obviously breathe in carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen in labor terms okay well we'll get to that in a moment yeah. and fungi are more like uh mammals and like other uh land dwelling creatures are um because they breathe in yeah they, they don't oxygen. try to sense those or anything they're not uh, yeah, they don't produce their own food. Yeah. Fungi do not produce their own food. So a lot of things I just said there was wrong, you know, right. um, in so, that sense. So let's far away. Immediately, first thing you said, mm-hmm. you would sort of start talking about, okay, respiration, da, 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 and then said breathing. Yep. First big misconception that a lot of even like when you're, well, you're not even, but especially when you're trying to teach it, say, to key stage three kids, like you're, seven to year nine sort of style thing. The respiration is not breathing. Okay. Breathing is what's known as ventilation. Mm -hmm. And that is you breathing in and taking air into your lungs. Yep. And then exhaling and breathing out the air. Right. With the changes that happen in your lungs and whatever. Mm -hmm. That's ventilation. Right. That's, it has to do with respiration because it's how you get oxygen and mm-hmm. everything to where it needs to be in your body and how you get oxygen from the air. Mm-hmm. But directly, it has literally nothing to do with respiration. So what we're doing in, uh, in Equus breathing is we're just moving the air from outside our bodies to inside our bodies, whereas respiration is more to the, to the specifics Respira- of how it yeah. changes into energy. Respiration sort of. is the um, basically conversion of... Uh, foodstuffs. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, I just bumped the mic. Uh, foodstuffs 
to essentially the energy that's useful for inside your cells and your body. Mm -hmm. Um, so in that way, we can say that yes, there are a lot of things that breathe, mm -hmm. uh, but not everything breathes. For example, plants don't breathe. Mm -hmm. Plants don't ventilate. Yeah. They don't breathe in and breathe out. They just, it just happens through <laughs> processes. Imagine watching trees, like breathing. <laughs> That'd be really weird. Um, but trees and all plants and everything that is living on this planet, even if it doesn't require light or oxygen or anything, because there are ways of doing, uh, respiration without oxygen quite easily. Mm. Uh, but everything in that is alive on this planet, at least respires. Mm -hmm. But not all of it breathes because obviously bacteria, yeah, plants, anything. Mm -hmm. Basically, breathing is something that pretty much just animals do. Yeah, I don't even know whether you would consider what fish do breathing. I was gonna. That was gonna be my next question. Okay, right. So we've we've got the difference. We've got what sort of breathing is more ventilation. So yeah, that would be the science term for breathing. That's I'm cool. Not that again. Yeah, it's really going really really well. Yeah, Josh, stop um, <laughs> punching my mic. That stuff costs a lot of money. I haven't done this in a very long time. It's, used to, it's in my personal space, Michael. Yes, I know it is. And I'm sorry about that. But just because, you know, you're a regular on the show doesn't mean you're some sort of superstar who can start trashing the place, Josh. It's not fair. Okay? Give me money. <laughs> you owe me. Where's my money? Boof. Anyway. Um, mm -hmm. So with... Nice OJ. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very old reference. <laughs> that is. It's a family guy reference. Yeah. Uh, if people get that. But um, so, so once you've essentially ventilated, once you've... Once what one has inhaled in the human way and the sort of the oxygen and everything yeah. else goes into the lung, then what happens before breathing out essentially? What is what happens once all the air is in your chest? So uh we'll take this from a human perspective yeah. to make it relatable. I mean it's generally any like mammal stuff is gonna function pretty much exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. Uh so you breathe air in mm -hmm. and there has there is a the blood that's going to your lungs from your heart. Because your heart has two, uh, your circulatory system, which is your heart and blood vessels and everything, essentially has two loops. Mm -hmm. One goes from the heart to the lungs and back to the heart. Mm -hmm. And one goes from the heart to the rest of the body, back to the heart again. Right. So originally, if we start the cycle at your heart with deoxygenated blood, mm -hmm. which will be carrying carbon dioxide, which is the waste from your cells, mm -hmm. that will go to the lungs. Mm -hmm. And then because there is more carbon dioxide in your blood than there is in the air you've just breathed in, the carbon dioxide diffuses essentially across the capillaries into the air in your lungs. Oh, so the, so actually the, the carbon dioxide in other parts of your body is actually still the byproduct and your body is yes, moving into your lungs. I didn't realize it. I thought you breathe it in. And like some weird mix happens as like a filter and then just all the bad stuff goes, or all carbon dioxide goes out and then more of the oxygen gets kept in. I didn't realize that your, the cells across your body that go around actually carry like back the, well, yeah, the carbon red, dioxide. Red blood cells. Yeah. Red blood cells carry oxygen. I knew they, carried, they also carry out the carbon dioxide out. I, I knew they carried oxygen. I did not know they carried uh, carbon dioxide out. I'm pretty sure they do. I, I don't, I'm not, yeah. I'm not questioning you. I don't know anything. I did applied science, which is mm -hmm. ironically applied to nothing. Um, but yeah, so what happens is, if we talk about diffusion quickly, it is a passive process mm -hmm. that doesn't require any energy or input, um, by which, uh, substances will generally move from an area of high concentration, where there is lots of it, mm -hmm. to an area of low concentration, where there is not lots of it. Mm -hmm. So when there's lots of carbon dioxide in your blood, proportionately, there's not much in the air you've just breathed it in. So it leaves your blood and goes to where there is less. Mm -hmm. Equally, oxygen does the same, but the other way around. So there is low oxygen in your blood, but high, relatively high in the air you've just breathed in. Mm -hmm. So that then moves into your blood. Right. The blood cells are essentially like a, a, ve well, they are a, a vessel that they use for it. Um, I'm sure you've heard the word hemoglobin. Yes, there's a placebo song called hemoglobin. Yeah, that is probably no relevant reference at all, <laughs> apart from the fact that it's just called the same thing. It is actually um, all about that he talks about. It's like hemoglobin is the one for me, and he does say some things about it in there. But uh, I don't know. Dear. Hemoglobin, Mar Mario. It's in one of the Mario games. Bowser's Inside Story. They talk about hemoglobin, and I don't know what they're on about. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't played that one. I played Superstar Saga, and that was great. Um, uh, so hemoglobin is essentially just a protein 
that is inside your um the blood cells. Yeah. And it binds to the oxygen. Right. And it is red. And that's why it's red blood cells. Mm-hmm. It's like a red colour. Um, which is one of the things where uh, people have a misconception that your blood is blue because your veins are kind of like bluish mm. when it, it, your blood goes blue when it's deoxygenated. Mm. It doesn't. It's still red. Yeah. That's just the colour of your veins. Yeah. Because they're not like muscular and tissues. They're much more just like uh, thinner walls and stuff. The differences between arteries and veins, you can go on this for ages and we don't, won't get to what you actually want to talk about today. <laughs> um but yeah, the interesting thing is when people say like iron is good for you because of your blood and stuff and the blood tastes ever so slightly metallic, mm-hmm. yeah. it's because hemoglobin forms something called a metal ion complex, which I'm not going to go into. I just want to mention it because it's interesting. Okay. In which that iron isn't part of that protein, but it kind of like sits inside that protein molecule mm-hmm. and acts as the thing that kind of helps the oxygen bond to it. Right. Which is why iron is good for your blood. And why iron deficiency normally results in what would be called anemia. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, isn't that when you're really, your blood, really tired? It's only really anemia tired is time. basically your blood can't carry oxygen effectively, as effectively. Mm-hmm. So you end up more tired because you're not being able to have the oxygen to respire properly to create the energy that you need. I see. So that's anemia. Mm-hmm. Um, which is relevant in a way because we're talking about respiration and stuff. Mm-hmm. So that blood then gets passed from your lungs back to the heart. And now it's oxygenated, and then your heart pumps it to the rest of your body, mm-hmm. uh, where it can be used in your cells. Yeah. And what happens is, essentially, there is this thing called the Krebs cycle, uh, because res- glucose is quite a complex molecule. Glucose is what you use all your food, essentially, to produce energy, gets broken down eventually into glucose, and that's what use- is used in respiration. Mm-hmm. Respiration, at least aerobic respiration using air or oxygen Mm -hmm. um, is the process by which glucose reacts with oxygen to create carbon dioxide, water, and excess energy. Um, So it is what would quote-unquote be an exothermic reaction. It gives out energy, um, which is important because that's what you need for your body. Mm -hmm. Uh, The glucose is a complex molecule, and it's not going to react with oxygen very easily on its own. So there's a cycle full of enzymes, and enzymes are a biological catalyst. They facilitate the reaction mm-hmm. where it loops around, and glucose, uh, like one one molecule of glucose, will go through this cycle and through the cycle and through the cycle, and it will keep popping out carbon dioxide and water and everything. Um, and it's just a process because it's not as simple as glucose plus oxygen, mm-hmm. carbon dioxide, water, energy. Mm. It's not that simple. It's, what you learn at GCSE is an extremely simplified version of what actually happens. Yeah. But for the purposes of this, glucose reacts with oxygen to create carbon dioxide, water, and excess energy. And that happens within your cells. It doesn't happen like in your stomach or in your digestive system. It's inside your cells, specifically in what is called mitochondrion uh, mitochondria so there's glucose which basically gets split apart into loads of different that's essentially yeah, yeah okay cool so the mitochondria or a singular mitochondrion which is lesser known because it's normally just talked about as in the plural mm-hmm. um, is where the site of respiration in your cells and what happens is that your it doesn't your body just doesn't produce energy like nebulous and it's just released because that would then not be useful <laughs> What it does is store it in another chemical way, which can then be used to, um, again, be used in other reactions within your cell to allow those to proceed. Mm -hmm. So there is something called adenosine triphosphate. And that is what is created by respiration. Okay. And it essentially means that you add an extra phosphate to adenosine diphosphate. So there's ADP and ATP. Glucose, uh, respiration, essentially in your body, will convert ADP to ATP. And then ATP, which is a molecule, can be moved wherever it needs to, to then pass that on to something else so that the rea- the, that bodily reaction can occur. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's a conversion thing. It, it, it yeah. literally... Converts into something, moves it somewhere else, and if it needs to be converted again, convert it mm. to whatever it needs. It's just a cycle mm. of 
energy being put into a, a useful chemical store, which can then be uh, put to use somewhere else. Yeah, because we touched upon briefly in one of the other episodes, wasn't it, where it's like food itself has a, in really like a really visual way of looking at it has almost little bits of energy in, and you just have to find a way, or something has to find a way to put together and yeah, convert. We've talked about some of that. Energy. Like, it's, 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 it's a chemical store. Yeah. Because it's what we call energy is stored in the bonds between atoms. Mm-hmm. So in, say, carbon dioxide, energy is stored in the bonds between the carbon and the oxygen. Mm-hmm. That's just how chemistry works. Yeah, yeah. Um, and all these are, it's just uh, biological systems are essentially just chains and chains and chains of chemical reactions that are working together to produce an outcome or multiple outcomes. Yeah, and there's a whole thing of people, which a lot of people probably understand, which is was it the first law of thermodynamics is energy can never be destroyed, only transferred, essentially. Yeah, so it's basically you can't create energy out of nothing. Yeah. It can only be converted from one form to another. And that form may be a nuclear store, in which case you're actually, for example, I think you might have mentioned briefly something about the sun, in which the sun is losing mass. Yeah, and it constantly is... It's like a big yeah. uh, conversion thing, and it, it keeps converting and converting and converting, and eventually it becomes. It's like the. Was it, it wasn't lead, was it? It was uh, iron. Com- iron, and it becomes. And eventually, the way the star ends up exploding is the it, or in, exploding. It in. runs out of fuel for the fusion reaction. Yeah, and it all yeah. converts and converts and converts, and everything's been converted essentially. But yeah. in essence, the, the sun is converting mass into energy. Yeah, like that's that's a thing. Yeah, like that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, but. Back to the respiration thing. Um, that's essentially all, all there is to it. Your body creates these molecules from glucose and oxygen and puts it into a useful place. Mm-hmm. And then it can be used for all sorts of things in the cell, whatever that cell is meant to do. Yep. So you can have muscle cells, nerve cells, fat cells, liver cells, brain cells. Well, brain cells aren't nerves, but and that, that's how, like, all meta- those sorts of things. And that's how metabolism and respiration go together. Because as you say, you know, yeah. metabolism is you know, in really, really layman's terms from my perspective is obviously... You eat, metabolize things, get energy, and that's how you get the glucose. Was... And then the breathing is you breathe in the oxygen. That's how you get the oxygen for the respiration. Duh, duh, duh. That would be another mis- misconception. Precisely. Metabolism is not digestion. Yep. Metabolism is essentially... In, in a, a small part of it would be your rate of respiration. Right. So how quickly you respire. Mm-hmm. Um, more broadly, it would be the rate at which your, the chemical reactions occur in your body. Mm-hmm. And it may be a bit different to be, be, do it between people, but roughly, you know, overall, a lot, me- metabolic rate in humans is not too dissimilar from each other, mm-hmm. which is why it, people's diets and exercise regimes and everything do have quite an impact on how, uh, heavy and how much mass and everything you have. Yeah, yeah. that makes um, sense. What you'd refer to as the most useful metric for that is something called the basal metabolic rate, Mm -hmm. which is basically your metabolic rate at rest. Okay. When you're not exerting anything, not doing anything, you're just at the baseline. Your baseline of how much you respire when you're not doing any real, like, physical exertion apart from your, the things that your body has to do to survive. Yeah. Is the minimum amount of respiration you need to be able to survive. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Yeah. And that's, that is like the useful metric because that's the thing that will be different between people. Yeah. Because if your basal metabolic rate is higher, when you say you've got high metabolism, which mm. is one of the things that I've always heard throughout my life because I'm so thin, mm. um, that I use up more energy just to exist. <laughs> yeah. Whereas, whereas with me, is that other people around me use up more energy to deal with me existing. So I'm like a radiation. Yes, that sounds like a you problem. <laughs> Yeah, so um, so with the so metabolism, we we're talking about how. I'm trying to think how to word this. Obviously, the respiration we've explained, but with when you eat something and it goes into your stomach and then becomes uh, yeah. energy. Obviously, it's the it's a, a respiration process. Is that what you were basically saying? It, it's the conversion sort of. Metabolism is a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Respiration is one of those things. Right, right. There's a, a lot of different processes that are involved, and respiration is one of them. I see. Metabolism is not going to be just respiration, because it depends... Because, uh, as I said, the respiration produces the ATP, mm-hmm. and ATP then is used for other reactions that your body wants to do, mm-hmm. and meta- meta- metabolism is going to be 
based on those reactions because it's what your body needs to actually do to keep going, mm-hmm. which the respiration only provides another resource for. Right. So your metabolism is going to affect how much ATP you need mm-hmm. and how much ATP you need is then going, your body's going to need to respire more or less. And that's kind of how those things are like, interact. Okay. Because metabolism, metab- respiration is part of your metabolism, mm. but it is not exclusively your metabolism. Your metabolism is a load of other things as well. Because mm. it's what your body needs to keep going. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Which includes, say, your cell replication, all that sort of thing, like your, everything. Mm-hmm. That your yeah. body needs to do to keep going because your cells are dying all the time and yeah, replacing yeah. each other. Isn't it like um, I think it's every eight years or something? It's something like basically it's a cycle that Probably everything. Around that, yeah. yeah, from what I've heard, which this isn't once again, pretty much anything on the show that comes out of my mouth is layman's ter- It's either layman's terms, uh, or versions of things, anecdote. or yes, yeah, anecdote or so anything I say should be put with a little asterisk next yeah. to it. The um, whole, the whole like, oh, if every eight years you basically replaced every cell in your body. Yeah. It's, it's probably, it's not unreasonable. It's probably like a bit of a, yeah. Thing, yeah. It's, it's, it's one of those things where to think that's kind of like a general yeah. idea. Cause obviously certain parts, certain cells take much longer to dial. Sort of, it's not like every yeah, cell in your body. Yeah. It's not like in eight years, everything's like, yeah, we've all done. It's like certain cells take this amount of time. Certain cells take this amount of time. And in about eight years, generally everything has done one whole kind of cycle of dying and being and another yeah. coming. But that's really layman's terms, just a little nice anecdote. Um, so I want to ask about, um, cause we mentioned earlier. So regarding, uh, fish then, if we will go to fish mm-hmm. from, uh, humans or wait, I'll just say fish. So how do their gills work differently to lungs? They work in the same way to lungs mm-hmm. because they essentially take in the they they take in the water through their mouth mm-hmm. and expel it through what's called the I think it's an operculum, right? Uh, which is basically they go through they go out through their gills. Yeah, the and gills, the gills go one way, don't they? Yes, mm. uh, and the gills are essentially full of like loads of little fibery bits. Um, which all are covered in blood vessels. Mm-hmm. And the same process that happens in your lungs with the transfer of oxygen and carbon dioxide mm-hmm. happens there. But it's more difficult to do because oxygen is obviously much, much, there's much less oxygen in water than there is in air. Yeah. Because they're not breathing water. You don't breathe water. Mm. They are extracting the oxygen that is dissolved. In the water. Yeah, there's just a much lower concentration of oxygen in the water. Than and there is gills. in air as a proportion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and their gills basically uh, fine-tune that, essentially. It, it, it gets the concentration, essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because also, isn't it... Um, is it like sharks or maybe it's all fish? If they, they if you, say, to, were to grab their tail and pull them backwards, you would mm-hmm. kill them because the gills... I doubt it would kill them. But it would but hurt it's, them. Like, it's not the way they're designed because it's like... The, the way, as I said, they're, they're like quite fibrous, like almost like feathery in a way. Mm. And if water goes through them the wrong way, they'll like be like folding up and crunching over themselves. Mm, so yeah. then they just don't function because they're all matted and covered. Yeah. It, it, it relies on the surface area being exposed to water. Yeah. And if they get crushed up, then less surface area. Mm, mm. I see. Okay, that's interesting. But that's why I said earlier about do fish actually breathe? Mm. because they're not breathing. They're not taking in like air into their lungs or anything. They're just extracting oxygen from the water as they pass it through their gills. Yes, yeah, so the main difference between sort of uh, general land-dwelling creatures and sea-dwelling creatures, excluding the, the ones that are like amphibians and things, um, you have it essentially, we have al- almost like big gulp of air, big exhale. Big gulp of air, big exhale. Saying gulp is mm. making it confusing, but still. Whereas, whereas the fish is like just a consistent. Process. Yeah, so ours is like loads out, loads. Whereas there's just like. So it's that sort of. So the other thing that's a difference in that is that, as I said before, in humans, you essentially have two loops. That is a mammalian thing. You have two loops, one that goes from heart to lungs and back again, and one that goes from heart to body to back again. And when you say mammalian, just to clarify, that's mammals, mammals just for people, yeah. just for people who aren't quite sure, but yeah. Um, so do and that's what would be called a double circulatory system mm-hmm. because there are two loops. Fish have a single circulatory system. It just goes one way. Right. It goes from the heart to the gills to the body to the heart again. Mm-hmm. And that's all. Yeah, because they don't need to exhale. Yeah. Which also means that they... It's not to do that, it's just that's how they've developed and evolved. Because 
Or we, we, we could go with a um, non... We could go with a one-way circulatory system. No. It just probably wouldn't be as efficient. Fair enough. But there, there are uses to both. Okay. Um, it also means that fish uh, hearts only have two chambers. Right. You know, well, just to put it out there, a, a human heart or a mammal heart has four chambers. Mm-hmm. Two atria or atrium. One, one atrium, two atria. Mm-hmm. And then two ventricles. Atria, as the name suggests, is where the blood goes in, like mm-hmm. the atrium of a building. And then the ventricles are what pumps the blood back out of the heart again to where it needs to go. Mm-hmm. Fish have one atrium and one ventricle. That's yeah. it. Yeah, it's more simple. Does that take up less energy to have a system like that then? I wouldn't be able to answer that. I don't know. Fair enough. Depends on the, 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 the fish and the body and everything. Okay. And do, do have interest, do you know, if amphibians like frogs, do they just, can they just hold their breath for ages or are they, are amphibians they... do not breathe water. They breathe air. Hmm. Are there well, certain... nothing breathes water, but they, they need air to breathe. They can't extract oxygen from the water. Is there a creature that can breathe in both, has both gills and lungs? Uh, I am not certain on that. I know that there are certainly fish mm-hmm. that can gulp air and breathe. They can breathe air and then also have gills. Okay. But I'm not sure exactly how it works. I'm going to look up. But it's likely that there may be something like that along the way because there has to be some sort of evolutionary jump between fish and land mammals. There is one. Creatures. Yeah, there is one fish. Um, one f- while all fish have gills, also one fish has lungs. It's called the lungfish. <laughs> I think that's probably what makes sense. Yeah, the lungfish can survive yeah. when its water habitat dries up from a seasonal drought. There's also certain land crabs that have both lungs and gills, so they can both breathe on sea and land. Mm-hmm. But the uh, the lungfish is a unique animal which has gills and lungs. Cool. So now that we're on a tangent about hearts, mm-hmm. um, you said about amphibians. Yep. I'm not entirely, I can't entirely remember how their circulatory system works, but they have a three chambered heart. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's two atria and one ventricle. Right. And their ventri- the ventricle is not actually very efficient mm. because the ventricle pumps blood both to the body and to the lungs. Right. And then they both come back. Mm-hmm. And then that mixes and then goes back out again. So it's actually not very efficient because oxygenated blood will go to the lungs mm-hmm. or like partially oxygenated blood, or I should say, goes everywhere. Yeah. So it's not like only deoxygenated blood goes to the lungs like in humans. Mm-hmm. We only send deoxygenated blood to our lungs. Oxygenated blood then comes back and gets sent to the rest of the body. Mm-hmm. In amphibians, it all just mixes and then goes all out and then all comes back in again from the body and from the lungs. Does that happen with lizards uh, as well, or is that just... Reptiles, I am not reptiles. sure what their circulatory, what their circulatory system is like. I was out of curiosity. Um, do, I don't know if we spoke about this before, and I'm forgetting. What I need to do at some point is re-listen to all of our Science for Simples, because the mem- what I'm remembering is starting to fade. Um, do we talk about them being cold-blooded? No interest. Or have I spoken to we about We may have mentioned it at some point to do with them basically being solar-powered creatures. Yeah, I remember us discussing that briefly, yeah. I don't know if um, the whole circulatory system had anything to do with the the cold bloodedness, but I assume not. No, the cold bloodedness is something separate. Okay, cool. Um, I think anyway. That's fair. Is it because fish are cold blooded. Yeah. Technically. Yeah, I assume that um, amphibians are cold blooded. Mm. Insects are are they blooded? I don't know. The other thing, a lot of a lot of insects, that's another nice point, have a single chambered heart. Mm-hmm. And essentially they the heart pumps yeah. and blood essentially their blood essentially goes out. Yeah. And then it, their heart relaxes and everything comes back in again. Oh, okay. So it goes, that doesn't help a podcast or audio show, but there we go. Yeah, I can see so it. It goes out, in, out, in, out, in, almost in like straight lines, mm-hmm. almost. Um, but the thing is, because a lot of insects are so small, they don't have lungs, they don't require breathing, the oxygen just diffuses into their blood. Yeah. When it gets to the outside. Mm-hmm, and yeah. then it's taken into the rest of the body. Mm. So there's a different way of doing things because of their size. And that size plays a big part in terms of um, metabolism and how much oxygen is needed and whether they even have a circulatory system. Is that why about, Is that why some of the biggest creatures living in the ocean, for example, obviously whales and dolphins, they have lungs? Or is that just because of evolution just happening? Well, they're mammals. Well, that's what I'm thinking, because obviously whales are the biggest... And they're secondarily aquatic, so mammals evolved on land, 
Yep. And then what, because things came out of the water. Yep. And evolved to be on land. Yep. Mammals became a thing. Yep. And then the mat, some mammals evolved to go back into the water permanently. Right. And that's how we have whales and dolphins or to put a word on it, cetaceans. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So they have lungs and everything because they are mammals and they originally evolved on land, breathing air. So they have to have lungs. Mm-hmm. That's to have what you need. Yeah. If you're of any decent size. Um, things like a lot of things like flatworms and all that sort of thing don't even have a circulatory system because their surface area to volume, like proportion, surface area to volume ratio mm. is large enough that they can get all of the oxygen they need into the body simply by that diffusion process. You're kind of absorbing it through the skin, yeah. essentially. Hmm, that's interesting. It's pretty cool. With, um, so when we get on to then plants then, because obviously we said that obviously plants don't breathe, but they still respire. So mm-hmm. w- what's that all about? Uh, so plants have on the underside of their leaves something called, I'm sure you've heard this word, stomata. Yeah, I've heard because there's, there's a few, it's like a, there's genders to do with, there's the stamen, which is to do with pollination. That's reproductive stuff. Yeah. Is there a, is there, a, what's the stamen, just while I'm on this, stamen and, Anther, stamen, stigma. Stigma is the female part. Yeah. I thought, I knew, I remember... Plant st- reproduction biology is definitely not my strongest point. It's something that's, that I need to work on. That's so. fine. Cool, you can work on that now. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. um, but essentially, a uh, single... I think it's stoma. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but many stomata on the underside of leaves. Um, and they can, they essentially allow air to move in and out. Are and they th- diffuse in and out of the leaf. Are they the little things that look like almost mini veins on leaves? No, those are the veins that live. Leaves have actual veins? Well, I don't, I don't know whether veins are the actual technical term, right. but they're essentially... What, ru- the same through, thing? They're through roots for the, the sap and everything, yeah. Okay, sorry. So are you uh, are you explaining how, how these... What do these do then? Sorry. So that process of diffusion happens in these... like little, the, the, the stoma is the hole. Mm-hmm. Inside the hole is a little pocket Mm -hmm. in which there is air. Right. And whatever the plant needs, mostly oxygen is coming out and carbon dioxide is going in Mm -hmm. because during the day, they're photosynthesizing more and their photosynthesis rate is higher than their respiration rate. Mm -hmm. So they need more carbon dioxide because photosynthesis is basically the reverse of respiration. Right. It has its own cycle and everything like we talked about before. I think it's the Calvin cycle. Right. Um, that's right. It's Cal- Calvin cycle, mm-hmm. uh, and that has its own process and everything as well. Because it's it's not what would you call you would call a reversible reaction, because it can't just go back and forward. It has specific mechanisms to go each way. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so plants do that, and then at night, obviously, when there's no light, they can't photosynthesize. Photosynthesis, haha. Photo needs light. Um, they will respire more, and then just that same process happens, but the oxygen will be diffusing in through the the stomata, right? And that's just where how they get it into there, and then it will be dissolved, say in in their the uh, water in the plant's body. I don't know if you call it a body, um, but uh, then that gets transported to where it needs because every cell in a organism's body needs to respire, so mm-hmm. every cell needs that oxygen some one way or another. Is that and that's one of those things where it's like um, where the, this is a, this is a big tangent and a big what if thing, but that's like with we're talking about life on other planets. It's like we are are there other creatures where they wouldn't need to respire or not need to respire with oxygen or this sort of thing of mm-hmm. how things could. Well, lit- there's, there's plenty of things that respire without oxygen, and even you respire without oxygen. Wait, tardigrades they respire without oxygen. Is that right? I have no idea. Uh-huh. I would be able to put a finger on it. It wouldn't surprise me if they had a mechanism which they did. Because I know they can survive the vacuum space, so I just uh, that's probably they they put themselves in like a form of stasis. Ah, uh, fair. That's on. the thing with them. Yeah. Um. So the a lot of things, including humans, uh, will respire without oxygen. Mm-hmm. This is called anaerobic uh respiration because just anaerobic is in without because mm-hmm. aerobic is with anaerobic is without. Yeah. Uh, it just means that your body does it without oxygen. That's what it does. So it just breaks down the glucose to produce some energy, less energy, it's much less efficient, and lactic acid. Mm-hmm. And lactic acid builds up. So it when, cramps? whenever you get a stitch, right, that's because your body's, your muscles are seizing, essentially, 
just to clarity, I'm not sure if it's an Amer- if it's an English thing or an Americanism, but a stitch is in when you're running, you get like a pain in your side from running too much, or when you're eating a lot of food or something like that, and it's like a, a yeah, it like be a, from when you're eating too much food. Yeah, it's like a it's like a sudden pain in a sense of like it's like yeah. a super cramp in one specific area that normally goes away in a minute, but sorry, um, just in case because I wasn't I don't I'm not sure I've ever heard an American call it a stitch, and just in case any people get confused between a stitch and like an actual needle and thread sort of mm-hmm. stitch. Um, so what happens if it doesn't train the now? Um, <laughs> yeah, we were talking about how you get stitched with lactic acid. Yeah, so uh, as I said, respiration, that cycle requires enzymes and things to make it work. Uh, if you alter the pH or the, the how acid or alkaline that environment is, mm-hmm. you can stop the enzymes from working properly. So eventually, and this is not just for respiration, this is all the sorts of processes that are happening in your cells. Mm-hmm. So, at a certain point, if you're if you're respiring anaerobically because your body cannot respire aerobically enough to provide enough energy, it goes into like an emergency measure. We need loads of energy quickly. Respire anaerobically, mm-hmm. produce enough energy, and we'll deal with the problem later. Right, and you end up with a lactic acid buildup, changes the pH, stops enzyme working, so your cells stop functioning how they should, right. and then that results in that pain and everything. Is just like. Stop. We can't go on anymore. Please stop. We <laughs> That's basically what's going on. I see. And your blood will essentially take that lactic acid, take it to the liver. Liver breaks it down. Everything's fine. Yeah. But it's because it's lactic acid, which is changes the pH, which then affects the way that your body works because it changes the conditions in, the, in your cells that stops your them working properly and then causes all the problems. That's very interesting. So it's not yeah. that I got a stitch because I can't breathe. Yeah. It's you got a stitch because your body hasn't been able to respire properly, like aerobically enough to provide the energy for the activity you're doing. And it's got to the point where it's produced enough waste product to stop your cells working properly. That makes sense. Yeah, that's cool. I didn't, I knew, I knew lactic acid caused the, the pain you feel when you get a stitch, but I was not aware of the ins and outs because you are the science and I am the simple. Bam. Sorry. I only just thought of that and I thought it was quite clever. Um, <laughs> in a sigh. Um, did you want to add anything uh, further? Because uh, obviously with cells, you, you mentioned about those a bit. Um, so one thing that we said uh, from the very beginning, uh, a bit of a meme, but still, um, the mitochondrion is the powerhouse of the cell. Yes. That's the site of respiration. Mm-hmm. Mitochondria are quite interesting mm-hmm. because uh, they are not you. They're not part, they're not like a, a part of your cells. Well, they are a part of your cells, but they're not your DNA. They're not produced by you. Right. They are, um, identical to the mitochondria from your mother. Right. Okay. And then your mother's would have been identical to her mother's and so on and so on and so on. Okay. And the proposed theory, that explains this is that at one point there were something, some kind of body, some kind of cells and they had the mitoc- what were, what were mitochondria living inside them as a separate actual creature or actual organism mm-hmm. living inside and having something called a symbiotic relationship. Mm-hmm. So the mitochondria is what I'm just going to call it. I don't know what they would have been. Mm-hmm. Um, but they lived inside other cells. Right. And that provides them with a modicum of protection. I see. Yeah. And the exchange is, oh, I'm living inside of you. Well, I'm producing this energy, which I have probably plenty of excess of. Would you like some? Mm-hmm. And that's fine. And eventually, over time, it just evolved that the mitochondria just became part of the cell. Right, I see. And essentially undid themselves as a separate organism they slowly merged yeah so explain to me one more time with the mitochondria why it's the power of the cell what it gives off this energy how does it have it's just where respiration happens oh, okay so in I'll... the cell the mitochondrion is where the respiration happens the chamber it's got a load of um like the, the way that it, it works you've got lots of like folds and things on like an internal membrane Mm. which is, it gets very complicated and it's just easier to say 
the mitochondria is just where the respiration happens. Okay. The cell just doesn't respire, it happens inside the mitochondria. And then the mitochondria. And the mitochondria just say, well, there's all this, well, they don't say, but it's like, ha ha, here you go. Um, the mitochondria then have, oh, this is all the ATP that's been produced, and that gets passed out to the rest of the cell. I see, I see, yeah. I remember from science, um, the difference between like a animal cell, maybe it was a human cell, and a plant cell. No, it would be animal cell and plant cell. It was a generalized animal cell and generalized plant cell. Yeah, because I remember the animal cell is basically just, it looks like an egg. It's like the nucleus and the jelly around it. But then the, Mm -hmm. the, uh, the plant cell was, it was like a square shape and it had, was it, uh, chlorophyll, uh, within it? Um, and I remember the chlorophyll were like these weird little seed looking things going around at like the inner part. There's like the main middle bit and then there was the, the chlorophyll going around. Yeah. Or chloroplasts. Chloroplasts. Which have the chlorophyll in them. There we go. And chlorophyll, like hemoglobin, is a protein. Yeah. Uh, slash pigment. It has color. Um, that gains that ability to be useful for photosynthesis because it has a certain metal ion in it. Mm-hmm. And for chlorophyll, it is magnesium, which is why they say plants need mag- magnesium. I didn't know plants need no magnesium. And all sorts of things. Even you need all sorts of things like iron, you need magnesium. I was going to ask you. Calcium, all that sort of stuff. I was going to ask you about that because I always hear, mainly I learned about it from Pokemon to begin with. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I learned it very vaguely from other things because there's like calcium, protein, zinc, all these sort of other things, you know, people who are really into their, um, that's from Pokemon or Clifford. Uh, yeah. the, all, all from, uh, when people are like, uh, micro, when they do like the micronutrition, where it's like literally, yeah, all the things. I know obviously calcium is the main one, which is, you know, bones and teeth, mm-hmm. which I, I totally get. Um, and then. I'm pretty sure bones are calcium phosphate, mainly. Cool. And then what, from what you know, obviously, I know you're not a doctor and you're not a nutritionist, but do you know what any of the other ones do? Uh, iron is, of course, for your blood. Yep. Um, iodine, I believe, is something to do with your thyroid, mm-hmm. which is, uh, that's got the thyroid gland is something to do with regulating, um, how much something have, I can't remember exactly. <laughs> Hormonal systems are weird. I don't do humans. Humans are, ugh. Humans are weird. <laughs> you, you do fish instead. Um, and turtles. And jellyfish. But it would just generally be a lot of things, like little mini things you need in processes. Calcium's also used in... Um, uh, You're right, thyroid is, uh, makes two hormones that are secreted into your blood. Thyroxine and triodothranine. These hormones are necessary for the cells in your body to work normally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, Something. Uh, calcium is also used in your muscles as part of the system that makes your muscles contract. Mm-hmm. And then obviously protein. Obviously, I know about protein a little bit because I eat, or oh, everyone eats protein, but obviously I concentrate quite a lot of my diet is eating a large amount of protein because it's like long lasting energy and stuff. Is it, do you know anything about protein? Uh, yes. <laughs> Go on then. Uh, so this probably bears in mind to start with, um, proteins, things in diet. Mm-hmm. The main three things being proteins, uh, fats, and carbohydrates. Mm-hmm. Carbohydrates, as their name suggests, are made of car- carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. I did not know that. <laughs> I had no idea. I, just thought were, I thought carbohydrates are something so completely when, different. When, in chemistry, whenever something has eight at the end, it normally because it has a lot of oxygen to do with it. So you have, like, say, calcium phosphate is calcium phosphorus oxygen. Right. That's just the naming convention. That's interesting. So carbohydrates are any mixture, depending on what you're going on with, of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Mm-hmm. And that includes sugars, simple sugars. Uh, well, there's, there's a mono, the science word for sugars is saccharide. And then you have monosaccharide, disaccharide, and polysaccharide. Okay. For one, two, and many. I see. So your complex carbohydrates, like say flour, are just lots of these simple sugars just like chained together. Right. And then your body like starch and things and your body will just break those down into the simple sugars and eventually you end up with glucose and that's what your body will use in respiration because it's the simplest form. I see. Lipids or fats are made up of two types of molecule. There is a glycerol molecule, which I don't even know the chemistry involved in that. <laughs> and then you have three fatty acids, mm-hmm. which are long chains of carbon with some sort of like oxygen, hydrogen bit at the end, which mm-hmm. makes it an acid. Yeah. Uh, and you have 
saturated fats, fatty acids and unsaturated fatty acids. And mm-hmm. essentially glycerol, three fats joined together. That's a, that's a, a lipid molecule. Right. I see. And your body will produce those. You can get them out of your diet, but your body will also produce those as a way of storing excess things from carbohydrates. And that's when people get overweight, they store yeah. fat. Yeah. Proteins, your body cannot store. It will use them. Any excess, it will purge. Yeah. Uh, and proteins are made up of things, uh, a long chain of things that are made up of smaller parts called amino acids. I was about to ask about amino acids. And so the amino acid is a single part of a protein. And a protein, so you, uh, and, and uh, as soon as you have more than one amino acid, it's called a peptide. Mm-hmm. And then you have like long peptide chains and stuff. Right. And then proteins happen because of all sorts of chemical things that go on that are complicated, and I'm not going to go into it on this. Okay. Um, but essentially, amino acids small, join together to make proteins big. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and amino acids are used for all sorts of things. It's how you're, you make any, anything in your body, pretty much, from all the parts of your cells, all that stuff, made up of proteins. Hmm. Enzymes, proteins. Uh, mitochondria, proteins. Uh, DNA, protein. Nice. So your body will literally just be using these amino acids for pretty much absolutely everything from DNA replication to protein synthesis to uh, creating new cells because you need to duplicate everything. Like mm-hmm. everything in your body pretty much that's actually a functioning part is made up of proteins. Like your hair, keratin is a protein, mm-hmm. uh, which is also your nails, um, all sorts of stuff. And they're just things that a lot of it is functional Mm -hmm. and your body uses proteins to do things because of certain properties they have, whether it's certain proteins are made and that means that your cells specialize to become muscle cells or bone cells or this sort of thing or the other. It all, it all depends. I see. And it's all based on gene expression and stuff. Okay. uh, You could just have another entire conversation like that. (laughs) Um, well, we're getting uh, near the hour mark, so I was just going to ask you, um, you can obviously add anything else that you desire, but I was going to ask of just the one thing I mentioned to you earlier, which was, um, not on the podcast, I think, uh, just the, uh, the meiosis and mitosis. I always forget that. Right. Okay. So a little bit of a, a quip to remember is mitosis happens in your toes and meiosis happens in ovaries and mitosis is the way that your body produces new body cells or what would be called somatic cells uh, and you'll you have one cell it will basically duplicate everything and then split into two cells mm-hmm. and that's those are called daughter cells yeah and then you have two there we go. Really simply, when babies are made, is that what happens with the splitting and the splitting and the splitting and the splitting? Yes. Cool. If you've got an egg cell, a fertilized egg, yep. and it's splitting and splitting and splitting and splitting, that is mitosis. Because that's what I think. Each cell, the, the important thing about mitosis is that mitosis turns one cell into two, mm-hmm. and that each of those two cells are identical, mutations notwithstanding, mm-hmm. to the original cell. Yeah. Meiosis has a lot of variation in it. It's how you produce cells called gametes, which will be your eggs and your sperm. Right. What happens is your cell does all the same stuff in terms of it will duplicate all the chromosomes that are in the nucleus, Mm -hmm. and then it will split them. A load of other stuff happens, and it splits them again. Right. So you end up with four cells that have a random assortment, basically, of the one side of all of your 23 pairs of chromosomes. Human cells have 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs. Mm -hmm. A gamete cell, so an egg or a sperm, has one of each of those pairs. Mm -hmm. So it will have 23, all different, and then that will match up with an egg cell. The sperm of 23 matches with an egg of 23 to make 46 again, which is a complete human cell. And then the mitosis starts happening, you create a child. <laughs> yeah, it's just quite funny just thinking of like you get, it's like the ingredients for a person, isn't it? And there's all sorts of things that can happen with the chromosomes in that process, which create the random variation. Because mm-hmm. it, it just, by chance of which, because in that one cell, it depends on which chromosome lands on which side when they start splitting up. Mm-hmm. Things can happen where essentially the, the chromosomes cross over. 
which is actually called crossing over, uh, and essentially swap parts. Right. And that creates more variation because the chromosomes are fundamentally different from what they were before. Yeah. Um, and that then produces a lot of random variation, which then means that pretty much identical twins withstanding or identical siblings are born from the same egg cell. Uh, they are different. Mm-hmm. They're unique broadly. Yeah. Um, to the point where I think from something I saw today, uh, you know, like DNA tests and things that I might do in like forensics, uh, DNA fingerprinting stuff. Uh, I'm pretty sure you, the likelihood of yours being matching somebody else's is six. What? It's likely that in the world, there are six people that will produce the same DNA fingerprint as you. Got it. Got it. Which is why it's so reliable as a means of identifying somebody using yeah. the, that, those sorts of forensics. Here's my fun little anecdote because I don't know any knowledge. I remember hearing a story ages ago, I think around when DNA was first sort of the DNA testing we could actually identify and stuff. There's like a murder that happened and someone was identified as being their DNA and it just happened to be someone else that wasn't related to them at all, just happened to have the same basic DNA as them. That may well have happened. And that was... It'd be uh, extremely unlikely. I think there's like only one, one in a... Well, yeah, Whatever, I th- but, uh. well, yeah, I, th- I think I was the only case of it. I think it was in the mm. 70s, but it might be me imagining it. I don't know when this all happened, but yeah, that's my anecdote. Mm. Um, I think I, um, we're getting near the hour. I don't know if you want to add anything else, um, but for me, I think that kind of wraps it up. I think it immediately comes to mind. So as soon as we stop recording, something will come to mind. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we, we can call it, I think. It's yeah. a lot of information to digest. Yeah. Ha ha! Metabolism. Oh, side joke. Okay, wonderful. Well, um, yeah, it's a pleasure having you on again. And I'm sure in the coming months we'll do another Science But Simple and we'll keep this crazy train going. Don't look at me like that, please. Crazy <laughs> is indeed correct. <laughs> and I am getting a slightly sore throat. I don't know where this has come from, but I feel croaky. Oh, no. I don't know whether it's come across in the recording at all, but I just feel like I'm just like... You, you have quite a... Uh, not monotone. You have quite a low voice anyway uh, bass bassy a decent amount of bass to my voice I yeah you got, I don't know you got the bassy voice so it's not you, you can't tell the croakiness not from me talking to you here anyway maybe people are going to listen if anyone hears the croakiness in Josh's voice write in yeah you have to you have to you have to tell me it's all about so I can know. it's all about that bass I can't hear my voice I have to listen to a recording but I don't because it's like awful <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't mate I have to listen to my own voice yeah. all the time it's, yeah, well, that's a you problem it is a me problem yeah Okay. Well, thanks anyway, George. Very much appreciate it. (laughs) (laughs) And that's the end of the episode. Thanks as always for tuning in, guys. Now, as I said at the start of the episode, um, this is the fifth Science But Simple, so there's another four that you can check through Genuine Chit Chat's back catalogue. I've also done a few other episodes with Josh. Um, one was about transgender issues, along with my buddy Reese, um, and another one quite recently was also with Reese about sort of the state of the gaming industry with a little sprinkling of nostalgia. So if you fancy any of those, maybe be sure to check those out too. Coming up next week um, will either be part one of a two-parter I've done with my friend Sophie, um, or it's going to be one of the two podcasts that I'm hoping to record in London this coming week. So I won't say who they are or anything like that, because if either of them put out at the last minute, I'll seem like a fool. So we'll see about that. But um, yeah, apart from that, um, I've got a few other things kind of in the pipeline get, need to get kind of sorted out, but we'll kind of see how those go, you know, occasionally getting returning guests, sometimes getting new people, we'll kind of see what it all goes like. Um, as always, you can follow us on the usual social media channels, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, I generally post more to Instagram just because I post movie reviews, um, pictures that go along with some of the images as well. Um, and I do the snippets of the episodes that are on there as well. So, you know, if you fancy subscribing to the show, it really helps us out and push us up the iTunes charts. And if one thing that I could suggest to people is if you subscribe to the show and then if you have an app such as Overcast, you can customize the subscription. So if you're a bit sort of on the fence about listening to more and more episodes of Genuine Chit Chat just try subscribing maybe untick the automatically add sort of button and then what you can do is you can go on Instagram and check out some of the snippets I've got of I think the last 
five or six episodes I've got them at the moment, um, where you can just listen to a 30 second audio snippet of the episode to see if it takes your fancy. Or you can keep it subscribed, see an episode download, so it automatically downloads, helps the numbers a little bit, and then if you don't really fancy it, you, you can just delete it, you know? This podcast isn't about every single episode being for everyone, it's just, I talk to a variety of different people you know, not everyone's interests are going to be intertwined with every single guest, you know, I think they're all worth a listen, that's why I release them, and I'm very proud of them all, but, you know, just take a look through the back catalogue, if you've got this far, then I really appreciate it, because you're obviously enjoying the podcast enough to keep on going, so, you know, take a look for the back catalogue, also, if you do have any questions or anything like that, you can feel free to reach me on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, I say me, because I like saying us as the brand, but Genuine Chit Chat is basically all me, you know, Uh, host, edit, do all the social media channels and things, so any sort of feedback is really appreciated in all of the manners that you can give them i think that's about it really um yeah as i said i appreciate each and every one of you listening this far into the podcast and um, if you have i assume that you've enjoyed it so i really i'm happy about that too um yeah i think that's about it so um as always guys thanks for listening and i'll talk to you all next week